Hey everyone, I'm just going to show you a few things about the buttons down at the bottom on the right, the slice, the weld, the attach, flat tin, and contour. Well, let's talk about those. So well, let's go ahead and pick an image first so we can look at what we're doing. Um, let's see, I'm going to pick something that's just a little bit easy. Let's just pick... Um, Goodness gracious. Let's pick this guy right here. Okay, well, I had two selected, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup them so I can pull one off the other. Okay, so first of all, got these cute little guys over here. All right. And then we have our sunflower. So first of all, the um, the way that we use the slice tool is we will go ahead and click a shape. Now you may already have one in here that you need to do, but this is how it works. So you have your, uh, your object that you want to slice out of. And let's say we want to slice Goofy out of that in, out of that. First of all, I'm going to want to bring Goofy to the front. So all you do is right click and send the background that you have to the back or right click on Goofy and bring him to the front. Either way, Goofy needs to be in, on top so you can see what you're doing and you're slicing it out of. Now when you slice, you can only select one thing at a time. So if I wanted to do Mickey and Minnie, for example, make them a little bit bigger. If I wanted to do both of these out of my background, first of all, you see the slice is not available. If I click on Minnie and Mickey and the background, I select them all, the slice is still not available. If I click, if I click on Minnie and the background, now you'll see the slice is available. So you can only do one object at a time. You cannot do both. So what I would do is I would select my square again, send it to the back, have Mickey now, shift and select the background, and then the slice is now available again. So now I have Mickey and Minnie sliced out of um, the, the shape that I had. Okay, so that's one of the problems most people think is that they can select everything and slice at once. You can't. And even if you have text, you cannot do it all at once. You have to bring this over. Let's change the color so I can, you see what I'm doing. Now if I select this and this, the slice can be done because it was grouped. So notice that um, if my text was not grouped, let's say, and this may happen when you bring something in from somebody else, <clears throat> you may have found this frustrating. But if we ungroup it and we select all of these and then select our back, the slice is not there. So you would have to do one at a time. See, now it's there. So I got my E. My E is now sliced out, but the rest is not. So those are some things on um, slicing out. You can group your objects. So let's do another test. Let's take a shape square again and bring it over here. And let's take Pluto and Daffy Duck and let's group them and bring them over here. Now if I select that, those two, I made them a little bit too big. If I select those two and select the background, see now you'll notice that they are not, the slice is not there. So it is picky. I don't really understand the reason or logic behind it, but if it's not working, then those are the, those are the culprits. Let's ungroup it. Now if I select one and the background, the slice is there. 
So you just have to see what's happening when you are doing your objects. If they're grouped, ungroup them, do one thing at a time. All right, so that's how you use the slice tool. All right, let's look at the, let's look at the, let's look at the weld tool, tool next. Now, let's see if, let's say we wanted to put a circle behind the middle of the flower. Okay, I'm going to, you're gonna see what happens, but if I select this and I select the flower, the weld is now available and I'm going to weld those two objects. So what it did was it took whatever was in front and it uh, welded it to all of the spaces that it was touching. So this is one solid object. You'll see there's no way to ungroup it or anything like that. It's all one solid object. Let me undo that. And now you see they're two separate objects. Let me send this one to the back. And you, now you can see it's in the back. So if I do the same thing again and I weld it, you'll see how it affected this, it has a cut through it, but it's all one piece, there, it's not grouped, um, but it's not something that you wanted. And do that again, take it off to the side. Now, um, sometimes you will want to weld things together. So for example, I have two circles, I'm gonna overlap them. Maybe I'm making a, a snowman like this. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger, and this one a little bit in the medium size like that. Now, I'm not gonna to wanna to cut this out this way and then have to um, put them all together. So what I would do is I would select all three and weld them together and now it's one piece. You don't have the three separate pieces. So that's that's what welding does. It, it, it joins all these things together. Okay, and then let's look at attach. Now attach has to do with how it's placed on the mat. So you can't really tell that anything's happening with this at the moment. It's grouped and you would think that it would be this way when you go to cut it, but if you go to make it at this point, well, it did stay together. But look at our flower. It's on separate pieces too. Okay. Let's see, let's take this and ungroup it. Now they're all individual. So this has to do, like if, you, if you're using Cricut and you do it and it works, that's great. But if you bring something in on another SVG, let's go to make it. And notice nothing is making sense right here. It just, it just puts all the letters in this that go together. So let's cancel that. So if I brought this in from another program, I would select it all and you click the attach just to be sure that now when you go to make it, they are in the order that you want them. So that's what attach does, puts them in the order that you want them. So if we had taken this and we attached, it turns it all to blue because it's gonna wanna put it all on one mat and then we'll go down to the blue and you'll see it's all here versus the red and the blue on different mats. So that's what attach does. Okay. Then we have flatten. So for example, if I wanted to make this a print and cut, I would need to flatten this design because right now it's gonna to wanna to put it on different mats and it's not going to want to do a print and cut. So what we're gonna do is change it to a print and cut, and then we're going to flatten the design. And now when we go to make it, you'll see that it's all on one mat. It has the square around it, and now you can do the print and cut. Okay, let's see. 
let's unflatten that and let's go to make it just to show you the difference. Still there, but that is what flatten is for. Um, if a design is not flattened, then sometimes it will not do a print and cut. Just depends on the design. So if you get to the point where you do go to the mat and it doesn't look like that with the box around it and everything, just go ahead and flatten it and then you'll see what happens. Let's check it one more time. Okay, I guess it was still flattened before. So now it's wanting to, to do them separate. See if I flatten it and go to make it. Now it's, it's combined. Okay, so that's what flatten does, and it has to do with when you're doing a print and cut, it will allow you to do that. So there's two ways to do that. I don't know if you noticed that, but the first time I select the print and cut, and the second time it's, it is a basic cut file, but I hit flatten and it became um, a, a regular print to cut. A little confusing, that confused me even. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's go to contour. Let's say we got Pluto here and we don't want his little um, whisker showing because they're just too little and the Cricut's not gonna cut it. Let's make it a little bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and contour out the little freckles. Now, this is a tricky little screen here. Um, sometimes it's, it is um, sensitive. But you're going to see these little dots. They're over here. You can see them. This one's pretty easy. Sometimes you get more complicated ones and they're not so easy to find. But if you just click on them, which also is not always easy to do in the picture itself, because sometimes the you can't, you can't find where exactly you're highlighting the image you want. And sometimes you have to come over here and select them individually. So just to show you, I, even though I clicked on it, it's it's still it's just wanting to get that one. So that's what I'm saying. It's just getting that one every single time I click on any of these. So they're hard to, to, to find where the edge is when they're close together. So you just have to select them there. And then we'll go ahead and look at it and the little freckles are gone. The little um, whisker spots are gone. Let's contour it again. And you can hide all contours. And then you have a, a flat shape, which is nice if you're going to do a 3D image, then you have a flat shape. Um, you can show all the contours back again and select just select whatever you want to leave out of your picture. And then he's back again. So uh, just quickly, if I was going to do this and I wanted to do a 3D on this guy, what I would do is I would select I'm going to first of all copy and paste because um, you always work off of a copy. Let's get the sunflower, let's get everything else out of the way. So what you can do is take one of your Pluto's, contour him, and then let's say we are going to take out the little nose and we're going to take out the little, the eyeballs and the tongue. Okay, and then so this is one in, this is one layer, this is one layer, and now I'm going to copy and paste them again. And then out of this con this one I'm going to contour out. Um, let's see, let's put the eyes, let's put everything back in. And then select the things that weren't selected before. And take them out. little dots out too okay so now you can see you have different layers so let's say that um, of course you have to be mindful like, like you don't you, the eyes need to show through and you have to make sure what what's showing through to be the different colors so this would need to be white for sure because of the whites in the eyeballs. And that would go 
that would go on top. Okay, and this one I'm going to have this one be black. Okay, so this one would go on top. That one. But we're missing the see through. So you just have to be careful of what you're picking to contour out. So let's see. One. Let's bring this back in. That's everything. And then put you'll put your orange on top. It really just depends on on your planning of this. So I would probably make his tongue white so I'd have a few more layers but you get what I'm talking about so you <clears throat> you can contour out all these pieces to make your own 3d image let me give it one more shot okay so this one needs the tongue. Let's put the tongue in, back in. There we go. Now let's make this one red instead. There we go. So now you can see how you can do the different layers. And this one I would take out his eyes eyes, the background of the eyes. Make this one black. Yeah, that won't work. I think this one needs to be the gold color. And this one comes over. So there you go. So now, now we're bringing in some of the orange here. But see, it's just a matter of de depending on what you want to show through and what colors are behind everything. Um, let's see. One thing that I did not do, which would be good to do, is hide all contours for your last one. Now it's gonna make more sense. Send them back, put all these together. Let's go ahead and align them top and bottom. There we go, now he's working. And now when we go to cut him, look, he's got one, two, three, four different layers and you've got all the colors and everything that you wanted. So that's what you use contour for. And it does take a little bit of practice, obviously, as I showed you, um, to figure out which colors go where. And then you would put them together and have yourself a cute little um, 3D uh, Pluto. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe and then ring the bell so that you'll get future notifications of when I'm teaching you how to do some of these easy, easy things in design space. Thanks and have a great day.